let me introduce myself. I'm Dr. Fred Coville. Not a medical doctor, a botanist. I study plants for the USDA, Department of Agriculture. This house here, beautiful house, just built a few years ago, was built by the person I work with here and have worked with here, and that is Elizabeth White. This is Whitesbog. It's a little agricultural company town founded by her father, J.J. White, to grow cranberries. They still have bogs here. We still do that. But also, Elizabeth White started growing blueberries here along with me. She saw these articles. She thought that this would be the best place to do that experimentation on breeding blueberries for the first time. This is high bush blueberries, not the low bush that you find commonly in New England. But the high bush blueberry, which is sometimes called swamp huckleberries or swamp blueberries, they're not huckleberries, but it's a local term for them. That plant is very closely related to the cranberries. They're vaccinium. They're the same genus. They need the same sort of soil, or I should say lack of soil in a way, because it's mostly sand. It's got a lot of, um, of, a lot of acid in it. It um, has a lot of things about it that are not good for other plants. But cranberries and blueberries, even though they're, they're grown a little bit differently, they both thrive in this kind of South Jersey, Pine Barrens, sandy soil. So she thought this would be a good place for it, for the breeding. We started it in five years, five years to, to 1916, 1911 to 1916. We developed a number of varieties for the first time. We did cuttings and mixed um, a lot of the local bushes that were around here. You would have a bush, it would have a life to a certain degree and then it would die and those properties would die with it. But if it had good color, if it had good taste, if it had um, a good size, and um, she issued these to people, these are measures with little holes in them to, to uh, gauge the size. If it had good qualities, but it was lacking in some quality, and you had another bush that had that quality, you could mix them and you would get a superior breed for the first time. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about those because we have test fields right here by Sunnyview House, or house, and I'll show you some of those plants. Go. Ah, uh, now, that's a very nice one. This is a little early for these. Uh, these are rubles. Um, in about another week or so, these berries that you see here that are mostly green, they will, there's a couple of ones turning blue here. You will uh, see them to be really nice blue in a week or two. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this one off and show you that the blueberry has a sort of star uh, design on it at the end of it and these don't have too many seeds that was the idea they have smaller seeds at least and the smaller seeds sometimes you don't notice them um, wild uh, blueberries often and certainly the low bush uh, from Maine they tend to have uh, a lot of seeds and that's not a positive factor when you're trying to market these um, this is a very nice blue one and it's about the only one on these bushes here. These are rubles, and just let me tell you a quick story about this. I uh, showed you these uh, gauges or, or measures, and um, oh, this one is, it could be bigger, but maybe it will be, uh, at least some of these on this plant. But she, uh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth White, J.J. White's daughter, set people out, people from the pines, people who knew the woods and knew plants, picked plants that were really good ones. And um, what 
uh, we have here is one picked the original uh, the, the original progenitor of this was a plant uh, one plant and it was f picked by a man named Rube R Rube Leek and his last name was Leek and and we were naming these after the people who found them and we didn't really want to call it a leek because a leek is like an onion and people wouldn't want a blueberry that tasted something like an onion so we called it Rubel. Rube? We didn't want to call it Rube either, just Rube because that, w that would sound derogatory. So we called it Rube L, sort of like the Russian coin. Ruble. Not spelled the same, but, but it sounds the same. And so the Ruble is one of the earliest found in the wild that is still being bred today and interbred with other varieties.